Hello, this is David Wormsey. Today is Friday the 25th of May 2018. It's the day that GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, has come into force. Apologies, I wasn't expected to do a video on this topic, so obviously this is coming a little bit late, but I thought it might be handy for some for me to share what I've done in terms of setting up privacy policies for myself and for clients. So I'm just going to talk through this privacy policy. I've made a very simple one and I hope it might help with some of the confusion that I think is out there. But of course, I'm no legal expert. And also, if you're doing something much more complex than what we're doing, so say you are doing some marketing that involves some retargeting where you're looking at a visitor move from one site to another site this is probably not going to be too helpful to you this is really covering the sort of majority of websites that we deal with where they have a contact form they have google analytics and they have maybe an email newsletter so that's the case here so i'll talk through this so first off on this site i've not added any cookie banner there's none of those pop-ups there and i'll explain why I've not done that later, but I have combined privacy and cookie together and I've put a link in the footer here. So in effect, I'm covering two separate things. We have the GDPR, which is only focused on personal data and identifiable data. And then we have the cookie stuff, which really, I guess for most of us came in in 2012 and is known as as the eu cookie law it's probably a bit of a misnomer for that it's not really law because it's up to individual member states to apply it it is the e privacy directive is what its actual name is it goes back to 2002 so there are two separate things here but there is a slight overlap which i'll explain as i go on so let's start from the top with this one i've wanted to make this as simple as possible my understanding is with GDPR, one of the clear things that we need to do is to make this as user friendly as possible so someone can understand it. Now, when I've taken a look around at privacy policies and other templates that are out there, I felt that they're a bit verbose and a bit too much legalese in them and not easy to understand because our policies are very, very simple as far as I can see. So that's what I've aimed for, for that reason. I think that's written into GDPR that we're supposed to be making it simple. So the first thing I've done is to make sure that I know who the data controller is for uh, the company whose website I'm looking after and I've set them out. This is quite important to make sure you've got the contact details for that person and you can find them because under GDPR, People have the right to be forgotten, to have their personal data removed, so they need to be able to find someone. So that's right at the top. Then I've moved on to the contact forms that are here. And this is really simple text, but actually I think I've probably covered all that needs to be there for GDPR. So with your consent, this website collects and stores the following personal data, which is listed below in order to serve you. Now, I know it's a, a silly sentence, really, but I think it's important under GDPR to make clear why you are collecting people's data. And it's fairly evident from the forms themselves, but by just saying and reinforcing that it's there to serve them, that's why we're collecting those data for no other purpose. So that's added there. One of the handy things about technology in this case is uh, I've had to write stores because we are using gravity forms which does store the information in the database so this allowed me an opportunity to talk to the client about something else which is needed in gdpr and that's some policies about how long you retain information so what we've agreed here with everybody is that and and this is what i'm going to do myself is that once a year i'm going to set a reminder to remind me to go into the back end and clear out all of that data all of it in one go and then it allows us to be able to show that we've got some sort of policy and some sort of retention policy going with it. So I've been able to write this removed yearly, but also reinforce this right to be forgotten and that you can also ask for us to remove any information we hold on you as well. So I think that's pretty well contained. One thing I am going to do, I'll just throw this in. I've just found this on the repository, but I have not tested it. There's this 
uh, free plugin of Gravity Forms Remove Entries, which I think speeds up the removing of those entries. So I think it's a one click thing, although you have to do each form in turn. But I'm going to check that out and probably do a video for clients on that. OK, I think that pretty much covers that. Now we move on to cookies. Now, there's only Google Analytics here, but this is where we get the overlap between the cookie law. Well, I'm including this and also GDPR. So under GDPR, cookies that collect information that's identifiable information would come under GDPR. And that would be the case with Google Analytics as it is by default because it collects the full IP address and that could be considered as identifiable behavior. One person could just own that IP. So there's an easy way around that and it's just a case of adding a little bit of code from Google. So I'll obviously provide the link for this and this is the code. All that you need to do is to add this one snippet to the tracking code that you should already have on your site. And just find that over here. I'm using the Beaver Builder theme. So I'm in the customizer in the code section, head code. And as you can see, I've just added that one snippet there. And as far as I'm aware, because I haven't fully tested this, I must admit uh, that should be now anonymizing. And what it does is it takes the last two digits off the IP. So it won't identify anyone. The only downside with it is that it will make the geolocation information uh, less accurate, but I, I never believe that was that accurate from those last two digits anyway. And again, this is where GDPR is getting us to question what information we need. We don't need that information. Most of our clients don't need that level of accuracy if it's there. So this is obviously the way to go. And what it does is allow us to make this no longer personal identifiable information, which as I understand is got another one benefit is that means we don't really need to mention how long we are keeping that information. Now you may have noticed in Google Analytics that it's reset it to remove your data after a, a short period. I can't remember what that is. And you can change that if you like. Well, if we want to retain more, we can do that because we're no longer collecting that personal information. It's anonymized. I believe that's the situation. And finally here, I've just got a little bit on communication, the newsletters via MailChimp. I'm just reminding that they subscribe. We have the double opt-in on these and also that it contains an easy opt-out link. The clients added this one, their own data protection policy, which they have for their company, which I think applies also to staff. And finally on this page, I'll talk about this in a minute because I borrowed this information from another site, but it gives some information on Google Analytics, their privacy policy, their opt out as well. If you want to globally opt out of analytics and there's some information how you might want to do that with MailChimp and their privacy policy as well. And that I think pretty much uh, covers it all. Something someone asked me about and I'll just cover it here. How do you find out which cookies are being used now on this site only we only have these ones, but let me just show you what I do. I believe the browsers you can find it through your own browser, but I use a Chrome extension called, I think, uh, the Web Developers Toolbar. I just missed it. I should have hovered over it. It was a, an extension that was made for Firefox. I think it probably still works better there, but it's available for Chrome as well. And they've got a tab for cookies and you can view the cookie information here. There's my Google Analytics and when they expire. Now you're going to see some extra ones. But that's because I'm logged in. As you can see, that's a login. Thing. So we don't need to worry about these. These are not what clients are going to see. If you do want to fully list out all of your cookies, which in theory we're still supposed to be doing and may need to do, you probably want to check which cookies you are using, using something like this. Now, if you do grab the name of the cookie and you put it into Google and say cookie, you're probably going to find one of the few engines out there that are actually gathering information on what those cookies are and what other sites they're used on and how they've been classed. But many cookies uh, don't have to be declared. If I go over to uh, the uh, the European Commission's uh, handbook over here, it lists out the kind of cookies. So some of these ones that you were just seeing there were just these sort of session cookies. They were login cookies. They don't need to be included. Once I put information into shopping carts, they don't need to be included 
in this at all so i'll provide the link for this this gives a little bit of more information if you want to list out all of the cookies if they're more than what our site is using okay and perhaps this might be a little bit reassuring or maybe shocking i don't know because uh, GDPR is out and I believe that everybody needs to have a security certificate and as you can see that the the uh, European Commissioner's handbook does not have one it also has a contact form there so not everybody is uh, uh, getting this uh, spot on already so I think that's enough on that let me just talk about the decision not to have the the cookie banner as well so as I've mentioned the e privacy directive still applies at the moment but it is due to be superseded and was expected to be replaced by the e-privacy regulation which was due to come out today to be in line with gdpr but it hasn't been agreed and it now looks like it's going to come out in 2019. now this is going to change the focus quite a bit and why i think the it wasn't worth me putting a cookie banner there even though it might be good practice it's the way that we're moving forward here if we if we look at one of the things that the new regulation is supposed to bring in simpler rules on cookies so uh, the cookie provision which has resulted in an overload of consent requests for internet users will be streamlined and they want to move this to being more the responsibility of browsers now this might have a lot of problems to it and I'm not saying this legislation is going to say remove all of the banners because it depends what you're using but in our case it doesn't seem that helpful to anyone so I'm making the decision for us that having a banner with the kind of information that we collect is not helping anybody at all it's just an intrusion of its own something which drops its own cookie uh, to have as well so that's the route i've gone and i justify this because in the in the uk here if i go and look at the 391 public bodies we have out there there for the uk people advise the government on here if you look through most of their separate websites you'll find that most of them use google analytics but they don't have a banner and they have more more uh, cookies than I have which are perhaps more intrusive and most of them don't have it including the ones who advise in a legal capacity to the government so I take from that and I also take from the information commissioner's office in the UK even back in 2012 when the cookie law came out they said that they didn't consider Google Analytics to be a um, and nothing more than a minor intrusion and that we needed to focus more on privacy as time has gone on they've declared that they don't have anybody who's dedicated staff to the cookie law that they're only following up the top 200 sites in the uk and only if complaints are made and complaints have been dying out over the time so i think we we get without different government bodies being able to say ignore the EU cookie directive. I think we're getting a hint that we don't need to concern ourselves primarily with that. We need to focus on real privacy and getting over our message. So that's how I've uh, gone at this and interpreted it. So there we are. That's my explanation of my privacy cookie policy. Not the usual video that I would normally do. Oh, before I go, let me just mention, as I didn't, where I took this code from so this has been recommended to me quite a lot it's a ubender site and they've got a commercial interest in this they're trying to sell these policies in fact also cookie bars as well and we can see there's in up in operation over here so if you sign up there's a free version of this as well if you sign up to this and you're paying them you've got a lot of the uh, different providers of uh, services that you can implement here and it will create your own policy for you now i haven't gone for it for our use because it it's a simple use we don't need all that is there but my own feeling is that this is quite a complex document even though it's laid out very nicely if we actually look at the complete privacy policy it 
it's very verbose it repeats itself a lot of times and it doesn't really help you to understand in my view what's going on and where i mentioned about our retention times when it was necessary you'll see here because it's generic and meant for everybody you'll get something like retention time personal data shall be processed and stored for as long as required by the purpose they have been collected for and you get some more waffle but of course it just avoids the issue of telling you how long you're keeping any of the data. So I, I felt that this is not a better solution than the one that I had anyway. And of course, with any of these services, they are making money. So they interpret the legislation the way that probably is in their best interest. And of course, they always cop out. So it's always worth taking a little look at what they say about their own service. It's worth taking a look here. Uh, they say that they strive to offer the best, uh, what was it, a good starting point, they say, we cannot guarantee any conformity with the law, which only a lawyer can do. And they also mention, therefore, you not to consider it as legal advice effectively. So it may be useful in some cases to have something like that. But one of the frustrations for me, looking up stuff on cookie law and GDPR is that they dominate the search engines. Um, they offer useful information, which is not incorrect, but it does lean towards their interpretation of law that might help to sell their services. So I think we need to be aware of that. Anyway, that's my policy done. This is not my usual kind of video. I hope you liked it. If you did, then please give me a thumbs up. And please subscribe to the channel if you don't like these kind of videos, because these are not the type that I normally do. If you like WordPress and you like Beaver Builder, then please subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you in another video. Thanks very much for listening. Bye bye.